Today, we are taking a look into the Good and Beautiful's Motion and Simple Machine Science Unit. Hey guys, it's Bonnie from Mrs. Mom's Homeschool and welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are enjoying this Vlogtober series. I really wanted to make up for all the video lapses that I've had. I used to post three days a week and now I'm down to, I was down to one. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna give them a video every weekday in the month of October, so. So far so good, and today we are going to look into the Good Individuals Motion and Simple Machines Science Unit, which is for grades third through eighth. Um, and I'm gonna show you into each of these things and also the videos that they have as well. So what I love about the Good and the Beautiful's new science units is number one, they come bound. If you bought any of their old ones, they just came in a packet and then I used to put them in a binder and it was just like too much prep. So I like that they do the preparation for you. What I really, really love are the student journals. I love that it comes, I should put their names on it. Oh, one of them has it, their student journals. So they have work to do in here. And I also love that the lessons are not an hour long. They are much shorter so that I don't have to skip science on days where we're running late because the lessons are not taking me an entire hour to complete. Sometimes they're a little longer because we're doing activities, but that depends on how much fun the kids are having during those activities. I can let them keep going or I can cut it short. So the first thing I want to share with you guys is a look into the actual like teacher's guide, the actual like lesson plan. Here is the main like lesson plan. And here is the table of contents. These are the different topics you're gonna learn about in this unit. Force and motion, Newton's, all of Newton's laws is first, second, and third law. You're gonna be learning about speed and velocity, gravity, energy and motion, simple machines, wedges and levers, inclined planes, wheels and axles, pulleys and screws, and then you have a project day. In here, you have your unit information about your science journal, unit videos, the content for older or younger children, your science wall, your lesson preparation, and the activities. It shares with you the two books that we're gonna look at in our book pack. Here are some talks about the seventh through eighth grade lesson extensions. You have a master list here of all the supplies needed for each lesson, lessons one through 12. And then in the beginning here, you have all of your words for your word wall. So what you're going to do is cut them out and put them up on your, I mean on your science wall, if you have a science wall. So in my old house, if you guys are familiar with my old videos, I had a giant like bulletin board and I had this beautiful science wall that you guys all love. But now we have a little ghetto science wall. And that is right here on my daughter's easel. I just bought little magnets and I just put the words up there because my classroom still isn't complete and I would love to have a science wall again, but that's not happening right now. Just to show you, you don't need anything fabulous. So these are all the definitions to the words that your kids are going to be learning and I review them every lesson, like whatever we learned before. So here is a lesson and one day this week I will probably record a sample lesson for you guys, but you can see the objective is here. Any preparation or activity supplies that you're gonna need are going to be here. Um, and then, so for example, the objective for lesson one is to help the children understand force and motion, learn about Sir Isaac Newton and his important discoveries about force and motion. So then you're gonna read here, read about the motion of swings. It tells you what to read to the children and then what to discuss with them. Then you have a picture that goes along with the text. And in good, true, good in the beautiful fashion, you have your check marks, which I love. Um, then it has the cards that you're going to put up on the science wall and your kids are going to read the definitions. Then it puts um, art with science together, so force and motion study in art. It talks about different things in the painting. Then you have an activity here where we, I gave the children a bed pillow and a heavy book and had them take turns pushing it and then pulling it across the floor and then talking about the amount of force that was required to do so. Then we have discussion questions and then there's a video which I'll show you in a little while. And then you have another section about Sir Isaac Newton that you're gonna to read to the children. And it also tells you to go to lesson one 
of their student journals, which I'll show you in a little bit too. And then it talks about the extension for the seventh through eighth grade. Next, I'm gonna take you inside the student journals. There is one for grades three to six, and then there's a separate one for grades seven through eight. Now, my son is in sixth grade, but I still have him do a lot of the middle school, the seven through eighth ones, when I think he can do more than what's in here. So here is your grades three to six journal, and this is the seven through eight journal. I'll show them side by side. Okay, so for lesson one, the picture that we saw in the other book is large here. When we were doing the art, and my six-year-old had to cut out Isaac Newton's quote and then paste them in the right order. And then she dictated to me things that she learned about Isaac Newton based on the lesson that we had just read. And that was all she had to do for lesson one. So um, for my son, I thought that was pretty simple, so I did his where he had to write out one of the quotes and then he had to write three inspiring things about Isaac Newton. He also had his quotes here that he could copy and of course he chose the shortest one because if you guys know my son, he hates writing. But there also is an extension here, a deeper look at force. So your older kid can read the information, pick one type of contact force and one type of non-contact force and define them in their journal. So you have a separate science journal for the writing portion of it if you, if you needed it. They would have to describe why each of them belongs in that category and to provide an example. And then look at the images on the next page and write which types of force are represented in the pictures. So that's what they would have to do here. And maybe they meant here, as you don't need, maybe you don't need a science journal because there's lined paper here. So I guess it was just in here because this is the science journal. So I like that they have so much more that they can do being older. Now we're gonna take a look into the book packs. Okay, so here's, here's one of the books in the book pack. It's Motion in Sports. You can see the colorful images, talks about baseball, gymnastics, ice hockey, pole vaulting. So this is actually really cool so that if your kids are doing any one of these sports, they can see how force and motion, how they're using it in their lives, actually in playing, just playing a sport. It has almost every sport in here. The second book is The Story of Invention. I'll just show you a couple pictures here. The wheel, the compass, so it has all the different, different types of inventions. It tells, it tells you about them, and it tells you a tip, and then it tells you fun facts. So it's all laid out the same way. Airplane, the automobile, the telephone the light bulb, sewing machine, etc. The last thing I'm gonna share with you guys, show with you guys, share with you guys, are the videos that come along with the science unit. So here is my phone, my iPhone, and I'm on the correct website. And you just click on the appropriate unit, which is motion and simple machines in this case. And then you just click on the video. So this is, would be the video for lesson one. And it goes to YouTube. Excuse my dirty finger printed phone. Is not stationary. It is a place of constant motion. One of the basic qualities found in all living creatures is the ability to move and grow. As the pinnacle of all God's creations, the human race was never intended to remain in one place. No. We were made to move and learn. We were created to grow and change. The universe around us also moves in continuous ways. It follows laws and patterns organized by God. We have the... That is the Good and the Beautiful's Motion and Simple Machine Science Unit. I hope you guys enjoyed that peek inside of it. Um, I've read, my kids really do like it. I do recommend getting this. And as I get more and we do more, I'll share more with you guys. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video.